So I hate webcams. I have never been a fan of webcams and I don't like using them for any kind of real video production. I will fall back on a webcam for using it for like a Skype call or a Zoom call or something like that. But for the most part, I'm just not a fan of webcams. I would rather have a more full featured camera to have that kind of better picture to work with. But I'm starting to come around. I reviewed this thing about a month ago. This is the Obsbot from Remo AI. And um, though I don't foresee me using this as my main camera anytime soon, I have really fallen in love with this little camera. And I've come up with a few more practical uses that I will probably end up using this camera for in the future. And I wanna go over some of those things today. And uh, just a quick recap, basically this camera does do some motion tracking as far as like tracking your subject. So if I stand up and move around, it's gonna stay on me. That's awesome, I love that. And as you probably noticed, I did that command to do the tracking control uh, with a gesture command. And, and this thing also has zoom control that can be done via gestures. And I mentioned in my last video that this would be a great webcam for teachers and presenters and people like that who are working from home. But one demographic that I didn't think about that this webcam would be great for because the picture quality that you can get out of this thing with a lot of really good lighting behind it is the uh, the makeup YouTubers, the uh, hair and makeup instructional people who do those kinds of videos. This would be an awesome web camera for those people. So a month in, I'm really loving this camera and I love all of the versatility and everything that you can do with it. And though it's not gonna replace my main cam anytime soon, I have done a few videos with this as my main cam just because it's something that if I need to produce something quick, this is recording directly into OBS and I can do some uh, like quick and dirty recordings and get something out fast with with this camera and I love that and it's got a good enough picture quality to uh, do that kind of thing. One thing that I'm not personally a fan, which this may actually be an advantage for you, is that it has a super super wide angle lens, but there's something going on in the camera where it's not like most webcams. Um, a lot of webcams that have that super wide angle lens are going to create this fisheye effect and I'm not a fan of that, but as you can see, we have like minimal to no fisheye effect going on with this um, camera, as, as wide as the uh, angle of the lens is. And to give you an idea of just how wide it is and to show you why I, I personally don't, uh, a wide angle lens is impractical for my use, is I'm gonna push this thing back about another, eh, about a foot and a half, and as you can see, it brings a lot into view and this is way more than I want in view for my shot for what I'm doing so um, I'm gonna pull this back in but I was looking at this as far as like a uh, a commentary youtuber or somebody like that I think this is actually a pretty cool shot I've got my mic in the shot I've got some decent lighting in the background and I do have um, some filters applied in OBS right now to give this that like retro 80s vibe I'm gonna turn those filters off basically I have basically I have a LUT applied and color correction I'm gonna turn off the LUT now and I'm gonna turn off the color correction and this is what the camera looks like without any kind of filters or color correction and you can see that it's got a very flat profile so you've got a lot to work with in there i'm going to turn my filters back on just because i think they look kind of cool so anyway the main purpose that i've used this camera for is an overhead rig and one of the things that i really like about using it as an overhead rig is that I can use these little newer tripods and these things are super lightweight. The camera is lightweight and I can attach the camera to the top of this tripod, set this on top of my table and I can not only move the camera up and down to get a better shot of what I want to work with, but I've also got the pan, tilt and zoom controls of the camera itself to really hone in on what I'm working with. So I'm gonna show you guys how I built the rigging for this 
And uh, this is actually pretty useful if you're just getting into um, making videos, if you're an amateur videographer or an amateur filmmaker. This is uh, covering some PVC usage, and this can be a huge money saver for you to build a lot of your own rigging. I build a lot of my own rigging behind the scenes here, and uh, this is actually a really handy thing to know. So uh, let's get into it. So as many of you know, camera gear gets very expensive, and even camera mounting gear can become quite an expense over time. So I build a lot of my own uh, camera rigging, and I use PVC, half-inch PVC, to do that. And you can use thicker PVC, uh, heavier grade PVC, like this is half-inch. You can go with uh, three-quarter inch or even bigger if you want. The bigger you go, the less give there's going to be in the PVC. This is pretty good and I'm only doing two feet here and this is going to be plenty strong enough to hold the camera that I'm going to be rigging to it so half inch PVC is fine. And I just drill and tap this PVC with standard hand tools and create um, threading in it for quarter twenty screws so that it will take uh, camera nuts and fittings and things like that and it's really easy to do but what I do um, with these caps is I will take this drill bit here, which is a... So this is a 7 over 32 drill bit, and I found that this bit size works perfectly for creating your pilot hole in these uh, PVC pieces. So to really just simplify and show you what I do, these caps, for example, I'll try to put a hole as close to the center as I can here. So there, I've got a pilot hole now. I'm actually going to run the drill in and out and get a good clean hole here. And kind of shimmy it a little bit so that it's just a little bit bigger than the 7 over 32. So that's our pilot hole for starting. And I got that thing pretty close to the center. That's pretty good. That's, that's what we want to go for here. So now I'm going to take this quarter 20 bolt and what I'm going to do is start as straight as I can and what that's going to do is that's going to create threading in this hole for this quarter 20 bolt. And you can do it with these standard quarter 20 bolts from the hardware store, but I found that the easiest way to actually do it is just with a, a camera nut. So see how easy that starts and it gives you a little bit more grip for starting the threading and you may need to grab a pair of pliers to hold on to it while you do this but okay so I've got that threading started now I'm gonna back it back out and now I'm going to take this, run it into the threading, like I said, as straight as I can, and now use a wrench and save on my thumb and fingers and just kind of go slow and make sure that it stays straight as you thread it in. When it comes out the other side, we're out the other side now. We can back it back out. All right, so I don't remember exactly how long this is. I'm going to guess that's about an inch and a quarter based on my squares here. Um, what I do is I just eyeball it. You want about You want about, you know, that much sticking through 
when you thread this through from the bottom. And I've got these 5 16th inch washers. And these washers, these washers fit right on the bottom of the uh, PVC cap like that. So now what we're going to do is take this bolt, drop it through the washer, thread it in to the hole that we made from the other side, and I need a little bit of grip assistance here. If you use pliers like this to hold this PVC cap, what you want to do is make sure that you're not giving it a Hercules grip on here because you don't want to gum up the, you don't want to put a bunch of like divots and nicks in this PVC. A little bit is okay, but you don't want to like clamp down too tight, just enough to keep it from spinning as you thread in this bolt. Okay, so I've got that threaded all the way through. This is what our, the bottom, this is what the bottom looks like, and this is what the top looks like. So now, so now we can take this and anything with a quarter 20 hole, we can run that in there, and we can mount this to PVC rigging, and we can build off of that. And now we've got the most important work done for adapting this to PVC. And so I got this PVC T, and this is half inch on these sides and three quarter inch on this side. I made the mistake of buying this wrong size, but this is still gonna work for what we wanna do. I would have preferred that this be half inch down here. I've already got one of these made, but I'm gonna show you how I made this. So for the intents of what we're doing here, just pretend that this is half inch. Using the same method, we're gonna put a hole through this on top as close to the center as we can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect though. We're through there, we got our pilot hole. Now all we have to do is thread it. Using the same method, I'm gonna take this camera nut and start the threading that way. And this one's going a lot easier than that other one. It's a little bit thinner walled, I think. So I'm gonna take this, try to go slow and straight as possible. And we're through, so I can back this back out I'm not going to run a bolt through this one because I want to leave this open for putting on one of these tripods here. This will be the head of the tripod. So So looking at that from the top, that's what this looks like. Then we can add in our PVC pipe. Then from the other end, we can put on this coupler, and then we can put our camera receiver on there. And it's as easy as just threading our camera onto the adapter. Now we've got an overhead rig on a tripod that we can use to shoot down. And I'm using this Canon camera because I'm filming with the actual OBSBOT right now. But this really works with anything. You can use one of these things for a phone adapter and put your phone on this and do your overhead rig that way. So as you notice here, when we add this arm for weight, it shifts the center of balance for this tripod and you can mess around with the tripod and get the legs in the best positioning to kind of uh, counteract that. But 
I found that the simplest and best solution was to just add a counterweight to one of the legs. And simple enough, I had an old hammerhead laying around and a clamp. I just put the clamp on the leg and dropped the hammerhead on one of the arms of the clamp and it solved my problem. And as you can see here in the old one that I built, it's working out pretty well for that. It's holding it right in place. But the heavier your camera is, the heavier your counterweight is going to need to be. So that's it. That's my overhead rigging that I built with the OBSBOT webcam. And I think it's going to serve me pretty well down the road. I'm going to get a lot of use out of this camera. And I don't think that was the intended use that the manufacturer had for this camera when they built it. But hey, I love the practicality of using something in a way that it's not necessarily meant to be used, but actually looks pretty good. So. Um, every day that I own this camera, I think of a few more uses that I can use for it, and I really enjoy the practicality and the overall usefulness of this camera. If you got any ideas of what you would use this camera for, let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to hear uh, what kind of creative ideas you guys have. So I'm going to wrap this video up with a shout out to the channel supporters. There are going to be links in the description for both Ko-Fi and Patreon. If you want to help out this channel, donations are appreciated but never expected. Remember, the best way you can support this channel is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.